Hey, welcome back to Open Everyone of the High Bridge, a new short film that tells the story of a Bronx teenage father who's faced with an unexpected surprise when he learns the mother of his young daughter plans to attend an elite military academy and the main character takes on the responsibility of fatherhood and the film follows his story and joining us to tell the inspiration behind the high bridge please welcome the high bridge writer and director benedict campbell and producer john michael reefer hello gentlemen and hello. Welcome. Hello. thank you for being here thank you for having us yes. thank you very much for having us yeah, thank you for not only documenting a landmark of the bronx with meaning and purpose, but for being a voice for the next generation of gentlemen. We appreciate that, thank you. Well, it's important because everybody's always quick to talk on the other side, right? And so let's talk a little bit about who and how you were both, I guess, uh, attracted to the process. Right? You're the writer, so um, is this of some relation to a situation that you've experienced? Not personally, no, but um, The High Bridge is based on a feature-length script that I wrote, and um, it started because it was based on a friend of mine that grew up in the Bronx and he raised kids here. And then when the bridge reopened after 40 years and relinked these two communities, I thought it would be great to set a story um, around, that, around that bridge. And uh, so I based the film in part on his story. I found it to be clever, right, because the story itself is a high bridge road, and then, of course, there's the actual high bridge that separates the two main characters. That's or right. Or rather, connects the two main characters. You got it. Right. And so, John. Yeah. What made you decide to take on this film? So, you know. As a producer. As a producer, uh, the, the story resonates with me because I'm a father. And, uh, you know, my son and I, I'm a single, single father by divorce. So the, the, the complexity of those relationships um, aren't always depicted accurately on television or in media, and I thought this was a good opportunity to set a new path for that. And so, as uh, people of color, mm -hmm. right, and of course, uh, this si unique situation of being a single father, um, what exactly is the intention behind the short version, right? Because you're eventually going to produce a, a featured film out of this, yes, right? Yes, that is the So l give us a little insight on, on the, I guess, your uh, strategy. Sure. A lot of times when um, I've made short films in the past, uh, this is maybe my fifth short film, um, but the, the short film doesn't have anything to grow into. And so when I approached this story, I said, um, we, re we need to really um, make this a feature film and write it as a feature film first, and then we're going to adapt that script and make it a short film based on it. And so it's very much, you know, on that road towards getting to the feature film. And so the short is based on the script. And so, John, as a, an experienced single dad, how did you approach this uh, from a, a producer's perspective in, I guess, the just the, the messaging, right? Because I, I keep going back to messaging because our, our next generation, I, I'm grateful to you for taking the time to do something with such meaning and being deliberate about the messaging. Um, I love the fact that it's empowering a woman who is following a dream and educating herself and elevating herself. And then there's the young man who just chooses to take on this responsibility that in essence is, is rightfully his as well. Yes, uh, I think p part of what we want to be able to do is in terms of making the feature is garner some support so that the short will help people learn about our story and learn about the film and hopefully we can garner that into getting more um, financial support as well as support from the community. Spoken like a true producer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get all personal and go, hey, tell me how you really feel. Well, but like, also well. during the course, while we're making the film, I mean, I, I, we had some long discussions about my, my own experiences uh, as a single father uh, with Benedict and we tried to traverse the, the good and the challenging I inside of that um, paradigm of navigating the world uh, as, a, as a male black um, and how it can be very uh, trying um, getting, getting the kind of respect that you deserve. In what sense? It, it, the culture has not always been supportive of fathers participating uh, as, as, as it should be. Um, so even those who want to participate have found some challenges um, as the, you know, there's a bill in the, st in the state legislature now 
that's um, hoping to create an opportunity that when a, a couple is divorced, that they would automatically get joint custody of the child. And that's not the case now. Um, it d generally defers to the mother. And I think the opportunity that we should all look for is how can we best serve the needs of the child. Nice. You see, I knew it, right? I knew I would get it out of him. <laughs> I mean, I get it, though. I get it, though. So um, the film has been officially selected. It's available online. Now, w where are you going from here? So our next film festival, we, I, I just got back from the Provincetown Film Festival, so it's been in, so far selected for six film festivals, Congratulations. which is great. Yeah, it's really exciting. And uh, our next stop is the Stony Brook Film Festival on Long Island, um, and uh, we'll show it there July 20th. All right, yeah. and so they can just obtain the information on, on your website? Yes, it's on, it's on the highbridgefilm.com, and um, of course you can also see the film. It's on YouTube, it's on Amazon uh, Prime, it's on Vimeo, Facebook. You can see it on all of those platforms, and it's I, nine minutes. And, and I wanted to ask you that, too, because most films wait until after they've done the film circuit, right, the film festival circuit, before they make it available online. How is that working out for you? I think it's going pretty pretty good. I think part of our strategy was to release the film on Father's Day, and so it's it's only been online five days now. But on Sunday was sort of was Father's Day, and it was a great um, opportunity to put the film out there and have as many people see it as possible. Uh, yes. And we've you know we've gotten a tremendous response. The people that have seen the film uh, have been really warm and engaging. So really excited that people are getting to share the film with their friends and um, their network, and it's really exciting to have your work appreciated. That's lovely. It's lovely. And again, I think it's brilliant that uh, you're executing this uh, during Father's Day month, right? We'll just make June Father's Day month. Absolutely. And that you have uh, chosen to just be this uh, hopeful voice for the next generation of fathers to come. Yeah. And thank you for being here with thank us. Thank you and so congratulations much for having us. Thank you so much for having us. On all of your festivals. And I look forward to hearing uh, and having you back on when the feature is fully funded. Yeah, fully funded, yes. And ready to air. Yes. <laughs> ready to screen, I should say. Talking television. So. Absolutely. All right. Once again, you guys, The High Bridge can be seen on uh, The High Bridge film.com uh, that's the website and on platforms such as YouTube Facebook Amazon and Vimeo all right we have to take a quick break but when we come back we'll hear an inspirational story of one man's journey towards triumph and success we'll be right back